Hi, I'm Maria Miliora and I welcome you to my channel. Today I decided that there's no better way to correct the course. I feel I've been doing a lot of hauls, some niche, some designer, some new perfumes, some forgotten classics. I hope you enjoyed them. If you haven't seen them yet, go watch them. But I feel like we need to somehow like rewind a little bit and establish the common ground. And many of you haven't haven't seen my perfume collection. Some of you know my other channel and you kind of know where I'm coming from and some of you don't. So I think let's kind of like, re let's push a reset button. I want to show you my perfume collection as it is right now. I also prepared for this video in terms of, uh, I spent last probably three months um, very heavily pushing <laughs> some of the perfumes I'm disappointed with. Some perfumes I just don't use, you know, I bought them out of curiosity or, you know, blindly and just did not, did not, they did not find a way into my olfactory routine. Therefore, I grouped them, I put them aside into a different bin and I tried to sell them as many, like, sell as many as I could. I think at this point I sold um, around 30 bottles. I gave away around 20 bottles and I bought way more than that <laughs> since the last time we talked. Uh, it's like it was a slow accumulating process. I'm kind of like trying to split my purchases into thematic uh, parts and to show you them in some like edible size because uh, as much as I love Amy Love Perfumes and her like gigantic, just historic, 100 plus bottle holes. I'm not sure I can really pull it off because I tend to if you I don't know if you notice it's still an intro, right? It's still an intro. I tend to rant a lot So I just can't afford to show you more than X number of bottles in a, a single video because otherwise we'll be sitting here for several hours so uh, I really want to Give you a lot of calls, a lot of reviews, maybe brand reviews, or maybe like note based, um, you know, top X, top Y, and things like that. But for that, I really need to establish sort of a common ground with you guys so you understand where I'm coming from. I've been always a perfume junkie, but I've never been as much of a collector collector. I still am not. I'm more just got into it more in the recent year and a half, but I always had at least 10 bottles. That was always the case. I'm the kind of person who likes diversity. I would get bored of things very quickly. I always had a lot of nail polishes. I always had a lot of makeup. I always had a lot of clothing, a lot of shoes, a lot of purses, and a lot of perfumes. So if you're curious in any of that other parts of my life, I'm, I'm super happy to share some of my collections. I don't know my purse collection, my shoes collection, my makeup collection, things like that. Just uh, let me know, leave a comment below and we'll figure something out in the nearest future. When it comes to perfumes, about a year, year and a half ago, I really got crazy. It was I, I called it my personal perfume renaissance era because a friend of mine got into it and then a friend of a friend and then I saw more beauty bloggers that I knew some of them personally some of them just I watched their channels sort of like diverging from the usual you know bread and butter beauty and style stuff into something a little bit more niche and it was just that wave just caught me and now I'm in full-on madness when it comes to exploring new perfumes in your houses my conversion to niche started about a year ago. It's not in any way intentional, but you'll see that um, even though I buy a ton of designer, lax, and sort of mass market budget perfumes, I tend to keep niche longer unless it's a complete no-no because I those those perfumes not to mention more expensive and they're harder to get therefore you kind of like if you like like Andy Warhol said like standing in line makes you appreciate art more right so if if something is more expensive or if you like spend a lot of time tracking some niche uh, niche perfume around eBay or Mercari or like other places you kind of want to give it a fair shot in terms of uh, you know opening of the pyramid you know like making it blend with your skin chemistry and things like that with designer and luxe perfumes I have slightly different expectation. I usually, um, if I don't like it immediately, I'll give it maybe a month or two. 
unless I forget about it. If I dislike it immediately, I don't even try. I always either resell it or gift it or find another home for it. So if you see more content on my channel when I buy a lot of Lux, but I also feature a lot of designer perfumes and my disappointment, this is why, because I am very impatient when it comes to that category. With Niche, I'm a little bit more patient. We'll see how, how it evolves with time. Uh, now to the storage issues. I recently moved my storage. All of my perfumes currently, uh, on, I call it my perfume library, right? Because again, I'm not a collector, but I do have a collection. So I thought library maybe is a more appropriate word. So it's actually that shell, those shells. All of them are full of perfumes. They're separated by moods, the thing, the, the kind of things I could be into on a given day. So I open, if I feel like, oh, I feel like nude, sophisticated, powdery, spicy, something like that. You know, like sophisticated nudes, I have a shelf for that. I feel like, oh, heavy gourmands or like anything that's heavy, complex, loud, things like that, I have a, a draw for that. Anything light, flowery, um, you know, tea-like, you know, anything that is very, very flowy and has a lot of projection, I have, a, I have a shelf for that. I'm gonna show you each shelf and kind of quickly go through some of the brands. We're not gonna talk about each perfume, but you will get sort of a feel for, for my personal taste. It is obviously evolving, it's changing, but you know, at least we, we will be able to establish our own language in terms of when you see some new things or when I compare them to others. If you see any brand or any particular perfume or any note it's being mentioned and you want me to focus on that more in the future videos, let me know in the comments below. All right, so when I moved those shelves, um, now even though they're fairly well lit, um, they are always stay in the shade. Before that, I noticed in the afternoon they were actually exposed to direct sunlight, which warned me to no end. So now I'm very happy with this setup, even though it's a little bit awkward for me to reach there, to be honest, when I enter um, my study room. All right, my first drawer at the very top, and I usually change their position depending on my mood or like the season. Uh, for the end of summer and the beginning of fall, I put all of my sophisticated nudes, spices, shippers, um, some patchouli fragrances in here. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to rearrange it as I show you more perfumes in my hole so I can actually fit um, them more cohesively. But so far, what I have here, this is the one that I'm really struggling with. It's a hard one for me to wear, so I will gladly swap it or resell it and this is been Halligans. again i don't i'm not think i don't think i'll stop in detail on each of them so there is a memo the first one that i tried from the brand which is quartier latin and the one that opened um the brand for me i'm really curious about their perfumes now more been Halligans. it's lavender this is like a super affordable uh, Russian slash German brand called Brocard. Uh, they now have a boutique, like a niche line, it's called Cos Cosmogony. It's really amazing, but they are the cheap perfumes are just as amazing and they cost like under 10 bucks. It's just incredible. Gone. It's a historic Fougere Royale. Don't like the packaging, love the smell. Some of the Serge Luton's, this is also Opigon, Serge Luton's, a few that I have, this is really love Dame Blonde, very soft, um, really great suede, this is Vetiver, this is sort of lipsticky perfumes, I actually need to move them, they need to be in a different place, um, that was a, like, I'm not I'm never gonna do this again. Eventually, first of all, if you're buying so many samples and they claim they're two milliliters, they're usually half empty anyway. And usually, at that point, you're better off just buying a travel size. Anyway, this is, I showed you my first ever video, Hortensi by Rancé, I love it. Ooh. Uh, then also showed you in my first video, Phil's de Dieu by Etat Libre d'Orange, like a huge bottle. Some of the Yodzi Yamamoto. Okay, let's uh, let's focus here, please. More Brocard. 
Mitsuka Eau de Toilette by Guerlain. What else do we have here? A bunch of travel size and decants. You can see here all kinds of things in there. This, this, this is Molinard. Molinard de Molinard. This is Rappel to E, a really powerful and very long lasting perfume uh, by uh, L'Artisan Parfumeur. What else? Very soft, spicy, it doesn't last very long, but I still like it. 14 La Temperance by Dolce and Gabbana. I really need to rearrange this one because it's right now it's a mishmash. It had a theory behind it at the beginning, but now I'm struggling to explain to you what's the principles of this composition because it's kind of like everything at once, both chypres and and some green notes and some suede and leathery and spicy in nudes. Huh. That needs some work. The second folder was supposed to be all of my summery and light perfumes. So there's all kinds of, well, for example, Salvador Dali, which is very, you can see, like fresh perfume. It's like sort of floral green tea, jasmine. Mon Jasmine Noir Lertzky by Bulgari. Um, sorry if I'm butchering some of the pronunciations, I actually don't speak French. Uh, this is my favorite gear synth, it's like aldehydes without aldehydes. It's The Spirit Oscar by Oscar de la Renta, Moschino, A Star Open Holligans, Mon Bulgari, Kidu by Memo, which was a very expensive purchase. It's a beautiful light perfume, but it's really not worth the price, to be honest, considering how many fresh perfumes I have, and I don't really wear them that often. Mandarin Basilique, my favorite Mandarin fragrance by Guerlain. This is Pamplelune, which is grapefruit, but quite a disappointment, it's very synthetic smelling. Uh, one of my favorite morning perfumes, which is Rose Privé by L'Artisan Parfumeur. This is Oldie with a Goody. It's kind of like a more floral clone of Light Blue by Dolce Gambana. And at Le Porsche and High Butterfly. Lalique Living, Lalique Amethyst. Amethyst. Uh, this is really great summer purchase. Really enjoyed it thanks to Beauty Meow. Uh, if you don't know about her channel, you have to. You have to visit her channel. Uh, the name of the channel is Beauty Meow. Please send, say hi from me if you go there. Um, she highly recommended this. Um, I think it's this year released by Michael Kors. It's a flanker. It's absolutely incredible. Love. This is what Lux used to be about. This is what designer perfume used to be, be about before invasion of Lee, La Via Belle like fragrances. All right, so this is kind of like, I think this is a little bit more cohesive. There's like a thousand of decants there, which I actually wear. Um, and this seems more cohesive to me. This is light florals and kind of like summery scents. Again, I have, in my personal opinion, way too many because I'm not really a big fan of of this family, with exception of some particular um, notes, such as daffodils in this case, uh. Penhaligan Sastara, the best daffodil fragrance on the market. And we are moving on to the next drawer. This one contains all of the sort of sweet, vanilla, soft smells that I don't consider to be sophisticated or heavy enough to be gourmand or Arabic in a sense. Um, so these are still, they still wear evenly, roundly and lightly, but they are sweet in their nature. There is nothing spicy about them necessarily. There is nothing mm, light or flowery about them necessarily. Um, a lot of these contain some kind of like sweet white flowers, milk notes, uh, and a lot of vanilla. So let's see what we have here. This is dessert in a bottle. This is vanille banane, Bancom to our specific. A really good, well mannered, lipsticky kind of makeup bag smell. Trisardi, my name. Even more sophisticated version of that is 
Red Cube by Narcissa Rodriguez, I showed you in the recent haul. Uh, my favorite milky, woody perfume, which is Serge Leton Santal Majestique. Majestique? Majestique. Oh, beautiful Gardenia by Van, Van Cleef and Arpels. Gosh, let's focus. Let's focus, guys. Gardenia Pital. Uh, Vanilla Milk Adults by Killian. White Aromatique. Aromatics in White by um, Clinique. Jasmine Noir. This is Tardis by Carner Barcelona. This is a very little known Something Gold by Oscar de la Renta. Shalimar Souffle at Guerlain. This is a Deacon Voltaire for her. A bunch of tea cans. I think this is, what is it? This is, oh, this is a boutique line by Bottega Venita. Parco Palladiano Pera. Uh, Narcissa Rodriguez Pure Musk which is a failure for me, unfortunately. Narciso Black Cube by Narciso Rodriguez. Mugler, my attempts to become friends with their Lux line, designer line. Alien, and this is Alien Sublime, Sublime, I think. This is my favorite nude perfume. It's sweet like ice cream, but it has quiet sophistication to it and yet it's like it's not it's not your typical Avea Belle it's a very nude perfume this is La Mia Perla by La Perla I actually have a uh, another bottle of that hidden stashed away one of my favorite milks on the market a more nocturne by L'Artisan Parfumeur uh, Ara Sensuel by Mugler Okay, this is what we have here. The next one is the biggest one, and those are heavy gourmands. By the way, I'm sorry if sound is far from perfect, because I have to actually hold the camera and the microphone and show you the bottle. So it's this is like a complete mess. I don't know how people make those videos. This is crazy. Anyway, so this is probably the fullest drawer, despite my best attempts to clean it up in anticipation for the new holes that are pending and the new purchases that I recently made. But I'll like, maybe I'll rearrange, maybe I'll make room. So these are heavy, sweeter, more sophisticated perfumes. Some of them are honey, some of them are like licorice, incense, heavy cardamom, heavy spices, anything that I consider to be evening wear. So the Calamicheri Lady Pointe, this is best dark chocolate patchouli that exists in the world my apparently like it's it's so iconic for me that i decided to make it my um my th th number one perfume on fragrantica for now it's just it, it, it was such a such a find this is cartier their boutique line uh leur defendu seventh hour there is a very rare in my collection example of Mantal, which is, what is it, Black Mask, I think, yes. Not super big fan of their lines, but they actually have a huge line. They have a lot of diversity now compared to the past. This is Old Bouquet by Lancôme, their boutique line. Uh, that used to be my signature fragrance. Anglomania by Vivian Westwood, and I actually do have a another bottle stashed and I'm considering buying a second one just to always have it with me so two Chanel's not a big fan of Chanel actually uh, Coco Noir and Coco Mademoiselle the, uh, the only black dress that I'm con willing to wear by Guerlain Le Petit Robe Noir Black Perfetto a uh, bunch of artisans, Mon numero 10, Michan Loop. What, what else? Oh, no works key. Mm, just love that. Love it. Uh, the best amber in the world. Let's focus. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Please. Here we go. 
Le Ombre Extreme by Artisan Perfumer. I'm sorry guys, this floating focus is driving me nuts. Uh, La Lique, which is in a limited edition packaging. Eden by Cacherelle, very recent purchase. I'm kind of studying classic perfumes right now, so I'm buying a lot of oldies but goodies. Narcissa Rodriguez in color that we discuss in depth. This is Crystal Sands by Atar Collection, which is Arabic perfume house. Really good stuff, but very heavy. One spray does it. Femini du Bois. This is Armoth that makes, it's an Arabic brand that makes a lot of dupes. Sort of inspired, let's call it inspired perfumes. So Club de Nuit Intense is inspired by Tom Ford Noir de Noir. I actually like this one more. Um, oh, love, love everything by Lalique basically with very rare exception. Um, exception. This is Le Parfum. Yeah, Lalique Le Parfum amazing and they're so cheap and they oh they sound so sophisticated uh if saint laurent l which at first i heard was discontinued then i found it in britain and then i heard they're just a re european release they are very expensive in the states and yet they cost uh twice as little uh, abroad more salvador dali more salvador dali really affordable um, very kind of like sweet everyday scent if you like that kind of thing this is a beast this is selective number two by Atar collection which if you've ever tried Killian intoxicated this this is that times a thousand I kid you not like half of a spray will last a week it's crazy Okay, this is, oh, this is my favorite Elizabeth Arden, Fifth Avenue Royale. This is a heavy sort of rose oud for those of you who don't like heavy and don't like rose and don't like oud. It's such a wearable, everyday, heavy fragrance. It has richness, but it doesn't overpower you. Definitely, if you're into Arabic perfumes and like much heavier artillery, so to speak, this might be just too weak for you. But if you're just entering that space... That's a great place to start. You know, and it's really, really cheap. Fendi Furiosa. Love the bottle. Really cheap. Sunny yellow flowers. Very summer in Italy. Summer in Italy in a bottle. I kid you not. Samsara. Keiko Michelle. We looked at that already. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. And... The last one is some samples, some just something to make decans, and some of the perfume duplicates that I have. Let me know if you're curious to see which perfumes I decided to uh, buy the second bottle off, so I always have them. So again, a quick look. Um, if you think I have a lot, um, brace yourself, I bought just as many, or planning to buy just as many. I I decluttered intentionally a lot of perfumes to clean up space for my new purchases and kind of leave room for new explorations and new brands. Um, I don't regret it a single bit, to be honest, because I like to try new things and I buy a lot of stuff blindly, a lot of bottles without ever testing them. So there's always a healthy amount of rotation that happens in my collection. Um, if you spotted any brands or any kind of fragrance families or any particular um, releases or flankers that you would like me to go more in depth about, let me know in the comments below. This is like really difficult, guys. I appreciate your patience. I understand that we, we, we experience quite a few issues. The lighting, the sound is less than perfect, the focus has been just driving me mad this is not an easy thing to film so i appreciate that you stayed with me all the way through it um i'm more than happy to talk more in depth about some of the uh, my top x this or that or by nose or by brand or by the family of fragrances in a more controlled environment because my arm is killing me so 
this is what it looks like. You probably notice a lot of free space around, which I preserved for all the massive, the epic holes that I'm gonna do very, very soon because I can't wait to finally find a place to the new, for the new perfumes that I recently got. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel if you're curious to see more. Words cannot describe how I'm excited, how I'm excited to replenish my, uh, my library, how, how many new and exciting juices I'm going to put into it. Uh, oh, it's going to be amazing. If at some point the shelves get too full and I feel like it's a substantially uh, renewed uh, library of perfumes, I'll make another video for you sort of to show you what it looks, you know, when it looked like then and when it looks like now. Anyway, thank you so much for your likes, for your comments, for your subscriptions. I'll see you in a new video very soon. Bye.